Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Clara's story by C.A. King, found in the in the Together We Stand Volume 2, a charity anthology for Ukraine, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. I hate you, Kristen screamed, a pout forming on her bottom lip worthy of an award. Feet stomped on every stair on the way up to her room. Wham! Even the dangling crystal gems adorning the dining room chandelier rattled from the slam. It was shaping up to be a doozy of a fight. I know you don't believe me right now, Clara argued through the shut door, but one day you'll understand this is for the best. You're too young to be driving around all night. You need to get yourself some time to get your own license. She leaned against the wall, arms folded over her chest. Enjoy being a kid for just a wee bit longer, Peanut. You can't get your youth back once it's gone. I am almost 17, Kristen complained. That's nearly over the hill. Nearly over the hill. And things aren't the same as they were back in your day. She grabbed a journal off a dresser. Face it, I'm not your peanut anymore, and I haven't been for a long time. My day, Clara replied, smiling was over the hill and back again. That means I know what's on the other side. Bad things can happen to good people. <laughs> you don't trust me, Kristen cried. A path of tears fell down her face as she slid to a sitting position on the floor. The journal flipped open. Emotions set to pen were the best sort. One day, someone would read all of her trials and tribulations. One day, her poems would be published. Then, and only then, perhaps her feelings would be fully understood. It's not you I don't trust, Clara answered. It's whoever is driving the car, especially if any of you plan on drinking. Is someone designated to stay sober? Do you even know? So what if we have a few sips of a beer, Kristen said. A lot of kids are doing far worse. I don't do drugs or steal. I hope not. Clara gasped. I don't care what other kids do. I care what you do and who you are doing it with. <laughs> and dad's worried I'll end up pregnant, Kristen blurted out. Her face turned sour, imitating her parents' nagging. Don't be ridiculous. There are far worse things than pregnancy, her mother exclaimed. There are things that can, be take, that can take away your future. I just want you to be safe. I want you to have a wonderful life, the one I know is waiting for you. Great talk, Mom, Kristen snapped. Except you're laying it on a little thick. I swear, you are paranoid about every little thing. It drives me crazy. Just because a few bad things happen to you doesn't mean they will happen to me. Why don't you come out and I'll make some popcorn? We can even order some pizza, just cheese, your favorite, Clara pleaded. Dad's home. It'll be just the three of us. We'll watch any movie you want. You used to love family nights. I'm not a little kid anymore, Mom, Kristen blurted out. I want to spend time with my friends. Why can't you be cool with that? I I'm sorry, Kristen, Clara said. You're not allowed to go out tonight, and that's final. If you decide to stop sulking, you can come down join us downstairs. Ugh, Kristen tossed herself on the bed. Holding a pillow over her face, she screamed. Life was literally ending, at least from a social perspective. Her mother was too old to remember details of what being a teenager was like. If she wasn't there, another girl would be. Her relationship with Justin was still in the fragile stages. One misstep and she'd end up yesterday's news. There was too much competition. Every girl in town wanted to stand by his side. Tissues were in the bathroom. That was down the hall, far within enemy territory. Her sleeve was the next best thing, drying tears first, then wiping her nose. It was time for operations suck up to dad. If she had him on her side, it was Vito City, and she knew her parents. He was about to make an appearance. You know, calling her Peanut probably isn't helping any. Why don't you let me talk to her, honey? Greg asked. Boom. Just like that, he was there. Her hero. Fine, her finger waved in his face, but don't melt like, a, melt like a marshmallow. She needs guidance and a few restrictions. Footsteps led away from the door. Knock, knock. Sweetheart, Greg said. Can I come in? 
Kristen pulled her hair back to show without a doubt how much she'd been crying. A pathetic pout puffed out her bottom lip. The lock turned. She was ready. Come in. She plunked down on the bed, feet swinging but not touching the ground. The door squeaked open, her father's head peeking in. Are you okay? No, Kristen whined. Mom's treating me like a little kid. He sat beside her, one arm draping over her shoulders. She's just worried about you. Your mom cares about you. She doesn't want you to get hurt. Kristen held her gaze down. Couldn't she just tell me like all the other moms out there? None of my friends have to go through all this just to go out on a weekend. Greg sighed. That's a tough one, he admitted. It stems way back in her childhood. Uh, I know, Kristen said. Show, don't tell. I hate it when she says that. She sounds more like my English teacher than my mother. Speaking of which, Greg said, how's your poetry book coming along? I'm hoping to see my daughter's name on the bestsellers list. Kristen rolled her eyes. No pressure, huh? A smile burst out of about of laughter she'd been trying to hide. You have your mother's smile, he said, squeezing her tight and kissing the side of her head. That's pretty amazing. You know, it's the reason I married her. Not for love? Kristen chuckled. Of course, I have deep feelings for your mom, but that smile of hers was why I first started up a conversation, he replied. She was a ray of sunshine. On a dreary day in a cemetery, Kristen finished his sentence. I know, I know. I've heard the story enough times. Give your mom a break, he suggested. Talk to her. Reassure her everything is okay. That will go miles toward finding a balance between freedom and family life. Okay, Kristen sat up straight. I will. You will? Her father sighed at her. Really? What's the catch? Let me go out tonight, Kristen begged. I'll sit down with mom and work things out tomorrow. I promise. A finger made the sign of an X over her chest. Is it that important for you to go out this evening? Greg asked. It is, Kristen replied, hand, hands held together as if praying. My whole life could hinge on me going out tonight. That's a little drastic, don't you think? Greg chuckled. Okay, go have fun. I'll handle your mother. Just remember our little promise. She tossed her arms around his neck. I will! She grabbed her bag, racing down the stairs before he changed his mind, or her mother could ch change it for him. I'll see you later! What? Claire exclaimed. Greg! I love you, Mom! Her tongue popped out, the door slamming. I hate you wasn't the way to get under her mother's skin. It was the opposite. Clara gasped, her heart racing. She eased into a seat, eyes plastered on the floor. On the door, jaw dropped. She inhaled a shaky breath. It's not the end of the world, Gre Greg sat beside her, her one hand rubbing his wife's knee. Kirsten is a responsible girl. She'll be fine. He glanced over. She'll be better than fine. We can't stop them from growing up. A single tear slowly trickled down her face. I, I can't shake the feeling something bad is going to happen. I know it right down deep in my bones. People say, Clara shook her head, those three little words all the time. If there was a curse attached to them, it would affect other people as well, don't you think? Not if I'm the only one who is cursed, 